But uh, I told myself at that point it wasn't going to do anything. And then uh, after a few minutes, my brother came in. And he had worked with uh, troubled kids, where they have to put kids in restraints sometimes. And he came in, and he was the first person in the whole experience to actually look me in the eyes and talk to me like I was still me. And that meant a huge difference, because we could have a real conversation. Nobody realized that, but I was still there. Uh, me, Sean, the guy who's talking in the video, still there. So uh, Wade said to me something that I'll never forget, and I think it's something that everybody should say to someone who's going through a, a manic depressive experience, a mania experience, schizophrenic experience, and, and what he said is this. He said, look, Sean, um, I don't know what you're going through right now. We don't understand what you're going through right now, but uh, maybe you can tell us about it later. But right now, you're scaring a lot of other people. So if it would be okay if you could just stop talking, stop yelling, and get some sleep, and we'll talk about it in the morning. And for him to talk to me like that on an even basis, where I'm normal and he's normal, and I'm just going through some weird stuff, uh, meant the world. Because all of a sudden, I don't know, there was a connection that no one had given to me until that point. And that sense of connection, I think, is so important when people are in this uh, crisis situation. And I guess at that point, I started to figure out that maybe even if I was dead, I wasn't really going anywhere, that there was no next world to move into. And I asked Wade, I said, well, if I go to sleep, am I going to wake up? And he said, yeah. And I realized at that point that I really wanted to stay. I, I wanted to stay on Earth, and if I had the choice, I wanted to live. There was a lot that I wanted to do still. And I think there was a lot of people that I could help after being through this kind of experience. And in a sense, this video uh, ties right back to my time in the hospital when I thought, I want to help people who are going through this experience that I went through. And that's what this is about. When I woke up from the experience of being drugged, uh, the psychiatrist came in and saw me. And my parents came in and, and saw me. And the first thing they asked me was what happened, and I knew I needed to get out of that hospital in order to survive. So I told them what they wanted to hear. I told them that I was, my name was Sean McAllister, that these are my parents, that I'm in a psychiatric hospital, uh, that I had taken a course that led to a lot of insights in my life, and especially related to a scuba diving accident that I had had, and that I thought I, I had some sort of post-traumatic stress uh, disorder from that scuba diving accident and that it led me to think that I was dead but I'm alive I know that and this is real and you're a doctor and could you please let me go now um, it was pretty much like that and then they did they saw that I had my bearings about me and what they didn't realize though was that I could have told that story to anybody at any time over that previous period but I had chosen to follow the symbolic level, which was what I was in. I was in the symbolic world. I wasn't in the real, physical world. I was in a world that in many ways is more real. I could have told them that any time. But I told them that there because I knew I needed to get out of the hospital. I knew I needed to get away from psychiatrists. And then I went home after two days. I went home. And then I started to ask questions about what really happened to me. Am I alive? Am I dead? What is the nature of reality? How? What's going on? And, and where, what is this wonderful new world that I'm living in? Even though I wasn't sure exactly what had happened to me, I was sure of a few things. One, what I went through was a sacred experience. There is no question. I felt the divinity of God inside of me. It was as if I was God himself, itself. Um, it, and not in an egotistical way, like, oh, I'm fantastic. Just the only word I can think of is sacred. It was a sacred experience. The second thing I know is that that psychiatric hospital was probably the worst place anybody could have taken me. Because those people that work there as doctors, they have no idea what is happening to you. All they see is the crazy behavior on the outside and they want to control it. 
And that is exactly the opposite approach that needs to be taken when you're dealing with these people. The problem is that, of course, they don't believe in God. They don't believe in uh, God or Spirit having any effect on us and that this can influence their treatment in any way. Uh, so on the whole, I would say, you know, Wellesley Psychiatric Hospital, you were a nightmare. Congratulations. The most important thing that needs to happen when somebody is in a situation like mine, when someone's in a psychological crisis, is they need that unconditional love, they need to be supported, they need to be listened to, people, they need to feel trusted, because as soon as a person feels, when they're in that crisis, as soon as they feel that other people are looking at them like they're just a problem, and they're a problem that needs to be managed, and a problem that needs to be controlled, the person shuts down. And in my case, for whatever reason, I was so strong about my inner convictions that I wasn't absorbing the negative influences of the people around me, and they were almost all negative. Um, I was very strong in my position, and I just refused to listen to what they were telling me. But when you have kids who are going through something like this, they're 17 or 18 and they're having a manic episode, and their parents come to them, or their doctors, and they tell them, well, you're bipolar, and you're going to need to take these medications for the rest of your life. You know, what are you going to do? You're 17 years old. You just say, okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll do this. I have a problem. I have a mental illness. And as soon as you buy into their way of thinking, any beneficial uh, possibilities of this experience, they, they just disappear. Poof, gone. In the Buddhist and Hindu traditions, uh, there is a uh, practice of meditation, and meditation is supposed to lead you to enlightenment. How do you get there? Well, through meditative practice, you lose your ego. You lose this false self that we all carry around, that we all try and hold up and defend. Uh, and then once that ego is gone, there is a connection with the Godhead that is tremendously powerful. And that is referred to as enlightenment, or nirvana, samadhi, all these different terms for a form of connection with the divine. When my friend Sheena came to see me, and Sheena is a therapist, and she came down and, and talked to me about what happened to me, and I explained everything to her, and how I had had this confrontation with death, and was prepared to go on to the next life fearlessly. Uh, she told me that what had happened to me was fantastic, and had told my parents that I had lost my ego. And after further research, what I have found is that when people go into this manic state, or a schizophrenic state, these kind of things, they are losing their egos as well. The problem is that they are having the sensory experience that happens when you are enlightened, but they don't have any of the background. They're not prepared for it. And so when a 17-year-old goes manic, and has these incredibly incredible feelings of euphoria and connections, sensory connections with the world, where they lose the separation between themselves and the objects, um, they don't feel this as a God experience. They actually recoil in fear. They are afraid of this experience, especially when they respond to the way people are responding to them. They just become very afraid. So how I see the difference between Buddhist enlightenment and uh, bipolar syndrome is largely uh, a question of how it's being interpreted by the person who's experiencing it. It's largely interpretation. And it's so important to have people around the person in crisis who understand this so that the crisis can be framed in a positive way.